Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net. Welcome to After Effects Basic Training. In this series, I'm going to show you how to use After Effects and hopefully we'll get the basics out of the way so that you can move on to some more advanced things. For example, here are some of what After Effects is capable of. Of course, these are just an example. You can obviously imagine the possibilities. You've probably seen After Effects in the movies, motion graphics, TV, all over the place. It is a powerful compositing and motion graphics package. All right. So, with this out of the way, some of you are here because you want to learn After Effects. For others, maybe you lied on your job application or your resume and you said you knew After Effects, so now you're scouring the web for some ways to actually learn it and you found this great resource. Well, either way, I'm glad you're here and uh, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So, this is After Effects and if you've made it this far, that's great. It means you got past the tip of the day. So good work and uh, let's go ahead and move on. First thing we have here is the project window. This is where our media, all of our files, our compositions are all going to be stored. So let's go ahead and import some files now. So I'm going to choose File, Import, File. Now I can do this another way. I can double click in the blank area of the project window. So I'll do that now and the import dialog pops up. Now we can import any kind of media file for the most part and we can do that by selecting it and choosing open. We can also select multiple items at once and choose open. We can also hold down control and select specific files or shift and select a range of files. You can also go back, hold down control and unselect certain files. So it pretty much works like most operating systems, but I want you to know that most of that translates inside of After Effects. Another thing we can do is go outside of the folder and select the folder and choose Import Folder. And this will bring in all of the media items in that folder that are acceptable to bring into After Effects. So now we have a folder inside of our project that has all of our footage. Now we can make another folder by clicking on this folder item and we can call it images. Then if we move this images folder outside of the footage folder, we can then move our cloud JPEG into that folder. So now we've organized our items into subfolders and this is a good idea for keeping your project organized so you can find things, etc. We can also rename the items in the project window. For example, I can click on this girl.mov, hit the return key on the main keyboard, and type mall video. Now this doesn't actually rename the actual file but it does rename it inside of After Effects so you can reference it. Now when you select an item in your project window the information shows up in your project panel. We can also right click, choose interpret footage main. Now this is basically like your item properties or your footage properties. We can click on that and this brings up a dialog that allows us to do a few things. For example, we can conform the frame rate to another frame rate. Say we know it's a different frame rate and After Effects just isn't recognizing it for some reason. We can change it here by just typing it in. We can also play with the field options or if you're working with 24p advanced footage, there are many options here to change that as needed. We can also change the aspect ratio of the pixels. Color management options are also available, but we probably won't get into that for now. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other items available when you right click on your footage. We have our replace footage. Now, say we have an updated version of this same shot that's exactly the same length and we've already used it in our project. Well, we can replace it and it will then replace all of the instances of it in the project. Pretty helpful. We can also reload the footage. For example, if our footage is an image sequence out of, say, a 3D application, we made an update to it, we can then reload it here. We can also reveal in Windows Explorer, and this will bring up the actual location of that file. Now, I know what you're thinking, this is basic training and it's going to be boring, um, but I got to tell you, it's going to be even more boring than you probably imagined. So, I'm sorry about that, but, you know, there's just nothing you can do about that. These basics, you know just got to get it out of the way. 
let's go ahead and get started with a composition. So we've imported our media, but what exactly do we do with the media? Well, we need to put it into a composition. So what we need to do is create a new composition. So from the composition menu, new composition, control N, I'm gonna click that, and then we have this composition dialog that allows us to change the settings from any one of these settings or your own settings. You can also customize it as needed, and there's a few advanced options as well. For now, I'm gonna use the NTSC DV preset and we can also change the duration. Now, in a video editing application, the duration can be whatever you want it to be. You just keep adding files to the timeline. Well, in After Effects, it's set by the composition. Now, of course, you can go in and change this at any time, but if you know you're working on a 30-second commercial, make it 30 seconds. I'm gonna choose OK, and now a new composition is created. We now have our comp monitor, and now we have our comp timeline. Now, to add media to our composition, we can drag it from the project window and drop it into the composition. We can also drag it from the project directly to the timeline as well. Now, before I move on, let's take a look at the user interface. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is this guy looking at? Well, let's uh, put that aside for a moment and let's, uh, let's start with the time controls. Now, in After Effects, most things do not play back in real time, but instead, they RAM preview or in other words, they render to the RAM to allow it to play back in real time. Now, from the time control window, we can click on this RAM preview button, and it'll begin rendering, showing you here by the green. And when it's finished, it'll begin to play back. Now, we can also set the work area. So if we grab this and drag it in, we can render just a specific region. And that's good because that way you can focus on any one part of your entire composition while you work. Now, you can also change the frame rate of the playback, and I'll note that this doesn't change the composition, but just the playback. You can also skip frames in order to make the preview faster, although it will be slightly choppy. Now, the resolution can be set to half or even a quarter, which will allow the RAM preview to be quicker. Sometimes when we're working, our animations don't have to be really high quality. We're just looking at the timing or the overall speed of the animation, and the resolution is nice to be able to adjust. Now, automatic will base itself on whatever the composition is set to. In this case, it's set to full, and that way it will render full. But if you're always working half, it will automatically render it back at half resolution. So, pretty helpful. Now we have some other time controls here, but frankly, I don't ever use them because if I want to look at something, I generally want to see it in real time. Now we do have our audio switch and that will mute audio or allow audio to render as well. And then we have our playback. We can uh, play it back to forth or play once or continuously loop. So pretty helpful and I recommend you use the zero key on the number keypad to uh, access your RAM preview in that way. You're going to be uh, fast keyboard shortcut kind of guy. Now, other things to note in the composition is the zoom. We can change that. We can also roll the middle mouse button and that will zoom in. You can also hold Alt down and it will zoom in to wherever the mouse is. Up here to the top is our tool palette and we also have our workspaces. We can always reset our workspace if they become you know, unmanageable. And the way the panels work in After Effects 7 and CS3 in which we're in now, is you can kind of move them around, stretch them out, give yourself more space. You can also hit the tilde key, which is the key just next to the number one on the main keyboard, and that will zoom into any panel that your mouse is over. And that's helpful for just pulling it up really quick, and then you can zoom in. If you hold down the space bar in the composition window, you can move it around and click and drag, and that way you can kind of, if you're in really close, you can hold down the space bar and move to an area that you want to focus on. And again, we can zoom out and reposition. So really helpful tips that I use a lot in my tutorials and while I'm working as well. Of course, at any time, we can go into the composition settings and make adjustments. If we want to increase the size or change the duration, that's all available um, You know, anytime you need it. Now, another feature I have disabled because I am screen recording is the fast preview preferences. Now, we can set this to off, wireframe, adaptive, or a couple of OpenGL options. What this does 
if I had a very complicated composition, which I don't, but if I did, if I were scrubbing through this, the resolution would degrade itself to be able to play back relatively quickly. That's what adaptive resolution is all about. Basically, if I'm at full res and I scrub through this, it will go down to quarter res or you know half res and able to keep up with me scrubbing through it. Now there's also OpenGL which uses your video card to accelerate the previewing, but sometimes it can be inaccurate to a certain degree. So if something's not looking right, make sure you check adaptive resolution to see if that is the problem. Remember, not all video cards support all of the functions in After Effects. So, and one other of my favorite tips is if you set your work area, you can right click on it and choose trim comp to the work area. And that will cut the composition so that only that area is uh, the length of the comp. So now we have a one second comp rather than a 30 second comp. So very helpful if you're just working on a single shot and you wanna you know, focus on it. Now, let's go ahead and move on to some effects.